we're beginning a new section uh, in this class. Recall that this class, uh, the first quarter of this class was thermodynamics. The second quarter will be cloud microphysics. The third quarter will be atmospheric radiation. And the fourth quarter will be uh, fluid dynamics. I'd like to give you an overview of where we're headed with the cloud microphysics to give you the big picture so that we don't get lost in the minutia. Uh, in the atmosphere, and in fact in this room, uh, there are particles uh, in this room. Uh, we call these particles uh, condensation nuclei because every one of them could theoretically uh, be a source of a seed for a cloud droplet to form. And so we refer to them as condensation nuclei. Uh, they generally range in size between uh, 0.01 micrometers and 10 micrometers. Uh, we can have particles that are larger than 10 micrometers in the atmosphere, uh, but the gravitational settling velocity is so high that their lifetime in the atmosphere is only a few hours. Contrast that, the small size of the particles, with the size of the cloud droplets. Um, the droplets in the clouds that you see um, generally range between 10 and 100 micrometers uh, in diameter. Uh, and uh, they're composed of liquid water uh, and e every single cloud droplet will have at least one uh, particle inside it that served as an embryo for the formation of that droplet. And then you can contrast that with the size of a rain droplet, uh, which is huge. Um, it's uh, anywhere from one millimeter uh, all the way up to six millimeters. Um, and there's a physical reason why droplets don't get much larger than six millimeters because at that point the direct forces are so large uh, on the rain droplet that they actually start to split apart and break apart in flight. So the ultimate question that we're trying to answer in this uh, section of the course is how do you grow um, a rain droplet from a particle and gas in the atmosphere, water vapor in the atmosphere, in about an hour because that's the observation of how long it takes for a cloud to form before it can begin to precipitate. And so we have to come up with the uh, mathematical description of this entire process so that we can quantitatively uh, identify how this process moves forward, at what rate it moves forward, and uh, at what rate this, these dro droplets actually grow. So big picture, we're gonna start off with the observed structure of clouds. What do clouds actually look like from a scientific perspective, from measurements that are taken from aircraft that are flying through clouds? Um, next, we'll talk about the physics of condensation. Why does water vapor in the atmosphere ever want to condense onto a uh, condensation nuclei? Uh, what is the physics of that condensation process and what makes it a spontaneous process? Uh, we'll introduce the concept of the curvature effect um, which basically says for a pure water droplet, the saturation vapor pressure over that uh, pure water droplet that's curved uh, is actually uh, going to be greater uh, than that of a plain surface of pure water. And that has implications on the droplet growth process. Uh, then we'll talk about the solute effect and introduce Kohler curves, uh, which uh, basically reduce the equilibrium saturation vapor pressure for uh, cloud droplets by, by adding impurities into the droplets. Um, we'll identify which of the uh, particles in the atmosphere, which of the, cloud con of the condensation nuclei in the atmosphere are actually good seeds for the droplet growth, and we refer to those as cloud condensation nuclei. Uh, these are the embryos on which the, uh, the droplets actually form. And then once we have this background in order, then we can develop an equation that describes the growth of a um, cloud droplet by uh, vapor diffusion. Um, and then we'll start to look at a different type of growth mechanism, which is the collision coalescence mechanism, where droplets are falling through the atmosphere at different terminal velocities and overtake one another and collide and uh, coalesce. And so we have to, at first, figure out what is the terminal velocity of the droplets, um, what is their collision efficiency, and what is their collection efficiency once they actually hit. Uh, then we can develop a model that will describe the growth rate uh, uh, by collision coalescence mechanism. And we can compare that growth rate from collision coalescence to the growth rate by vapor diffusion. 
and understand which uh, of these mechanisms is primarily responsible for the uh, formation of the cloud droplets. And then uh, everything up to this point has been in a warm phase, which means liquid water, but we know that these clouds uh, often extend to altitudes where the temperature is below freezing. And then we'll start to talk about what happens when these clouds start to glaciate or they start to turn to ice. And so we'll uh, talk a little bit about the ice crystal formation process and the different types of habits, which are the different types of ice crystals that can form in the atmosphere. Uh, and then we will introduce a simplified version of the vapor diffusion equation uh, that has been simplified for uh, very regularized ice crystals. Uh, and at that point, uh, we can start to look at the relative growth rate uh, by ice crystal mechanism, by collision coalescence, and by vapor diffusion. And you'll have a pretty good idea at that point about how we can actually grow a rain droplet from particles in a relatively short period of time, in the order of an hour or so.